Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I am going to talk about historical simulation, a quick explanation, and then I will provide you with an illustrative example in which I'll be using real world data of five different stocks. Firstly, these materials are available within the Blackboard site of the module, but for students who are abroad, you can find materials from my blog, uh, which is www.banksandmarkets.wordpress.com. So that's something you should be able to find in my blog, which is this. If you click finance, you will get to that page. So now, in terms of historical simulation, what we say is it is a method that mainly relies on the fact that history will repeat again in the future. So with that in mind, what the method tries to achieve is the the future uh, values that will be simulated based on past performance, past data. So here on the background, I'm just saying that the method is simply mimicking or copying historical performance. For example, if you are playing a uh, football using computer device or something like PlayStation, then this is a simulated environment. Although you are not playing football in the actual pitch, you are, however, applying an environment similar to playing in the actual stadium. Uh, something similar can also be done when you play and uh, attend the flight uh, simulator such as this. Of course, you may need to pay uh, money in order to uh, experience the flight, uh, but then you will be able to feel landing, taking off, you know, when there is a cloud, uh, then you may get a bump. That jerk uh, will also be felt when you are uh, taking the flight uh, flight simulator. Um, and that's something that's available if you uh, pay the money and book uh, for the flight simulation experience. Uh, so here, what we are therefore saying is the method basically mimics uh, the scenario, uh, but it is not the actual. Uh, with the same logic, what you are saying is you're using the past data to reflect future performance or what will happen in the future. Again, uh, the past data you are using only to simulate for the future. It is not going to be what actually happens in the future. It is taking the values from historical performance. So the method therefore is pretty simple. It just takes the past data to find out the answer related to risk. Uh, there is no kind of probability distribution that you need to assume. So that's again means the method is very simple uh, and you do not need the parameters such as the variance, covariance, standard deviation, and so on. Therefore, this method is also known as non-parametric. 
Um, so in terms of the application, what you need to know first is what should be the length of the time period that you would like to include in order to compute the VR. So historical data, length of the historical data, what it should be is the key question. Of course, um, the VR computed will provide you relevant information and then you can link it with possible changes in market risk components such as interest rate, exchange rate, equity price uh, uh, related risk and commodity prices related risks. Um, and then it's very important again to find out which particular event or events are to be included and excluded. Again, how far behind do we need to go is equally important. What is also important is the frequency of the data, whether it should be daily, weekly, monthly, and so on. Um, then sometimes in some articles or uh, some companies, they recommend to have two to three years of data, but then it may vary. For example, if you go and see the, uh, the documents uh, that is produced by the organization Banks for International Settlement, in the case of banks, you will see that on page um, on page 90, 80, 89, so that will be somewhere in 92, uh, 89 of this very recent document, it says, that's page number 86, 87, 88, 89, it says that uh, you take basically 10 days, okay, um, and that's uh, for 97.5 uh, percentile one-tailed confidence level. So more information uh, about it on page uh, 81, and that's uh, here, and it says, here on page 81, the confidence interval can be 99th percentile, uh, and that's what uh, it says, and 12 months is the recommended period or 250 trading days. So you see it can be different from organization to organization, and in the case of banks, the latest document such as this from Banks for International Settlement is recommending 12 months daily, uh, and then uh, in terms of confidence interval, it is talking about 99%. So it is basically the role of the risk manager who would uh, be required to define the confidence interval, the the length of the historical data that would be captured to compute the historical simulated VR. Uh, so uh, that uh, will be the decision the risk manager would need to take if there is no prescription available. But then in the case of uh, generally two to three years of data could be a good choice. Um, and now if we say we take 501 days of data and assuming 250 is the number of trading days in a year, basically we will have 500 return data point because one observation will be eliminated when you are computing uh, the return, hence you will have a complete set of return for 500 data points.
So that's what we say here and after which you can find out the historically simulated uh, uh, VAR which can again the simulated return can be ranked and this ranking will also allow you to see and understand exactly what scenario may have caused that uh, uh, that uh, risk uh, at that given confidence interval so if we assume that there are uh, 250 trading days taken uh, in the historical simulated uh, BR calculation at 95% confident, confidence interval, what we are looking for is basically the worst outcome, which will be 5% times 250. So 250 times 5 uh, is 12.5. So we're talking about 12.5th or we can take either 12th or 13th worst outcome. Uh, and if the VR is set at 99%, assuming 250 days taken, then it will be the second or the third outcome that will be selected. Uh, and that's what it means here. Uh, which ba then basically means, uh, in the case of OOP, what we're saying is the history. <clears throat> the, what we're saying is the historical data, um, these are the outcomes that will only exceed 5% of the time here, over here only 1% of the time. Um, so um, let me very quickly provide you the answer, we see here is 12.5. Uh, so uh, 12th or 13th worst outcome. So here it will be 2.5. So uh, second or third uh, worst outcome will be selected. And we found this just by multiplying 250 times 1%. And in the case of OB, we have found this just by multiplying 250 by 5%. So uh, basically, you will see when I'll explain the illustration, it's conceptually simple. Data are generally available, so easy to implement, no, no assumption related to any kind of distribution, uh, unlike a variance covariance approach, this method doesn't require any parameters, doesn't require any kind of metrics, no estimation is also required, uh, and this method can be used for any instrument, that's another beauty. The major drawback is it's backward looking, it, uh, it uses uh, all uh, and only historical data, uh, but in reality, future is unknown. Therefore, uh, to say that the history will repeat uh, always can be uh, can lead to some mistakenly calculated VR. So now we will look into the example, and that way we will be able to relate this explanation better. And in the form of example, what I have is the data downloaded from Yahoo Finance for five different stocks from Hang Seng Index. So I just went to Yahoo Finance and then uh, found the Hang Seng Index here. And inside Hang Seng Index, I clicked and found the constituent members list, which is here. And from that, I identified five different stocks. And for those five stocks, I downloaded daily uh, share price and that daily share price from 2015 all the way to 2020 have been downloaded and they are these. Now, what I have also assumed is 
the amount of investment initially is 1 million divided equally into all five companies that's 20 percent in each therefore making a hundred percent investment in the portfolio consisting of these five stocks so i can now quickly find out the return and i can use the continuous compounding which is equals ln new divided by old uh, that's what i need to do therefore i have this for all five stocks i can just double click so all my re returns daily are recorded next i can find out the portfolio return and now i already have the weights so that basically means the weights can be taken uh, in the function sum product so that it will the weights will when locked will multiply and add the with the rate of return daily uh, and that's what we obtain for the portfolio as a whole and i can simply double click here so now i also have portfolio return values for uh, the the for all five stocks next what i can do now is copy all of these and this time paste them as values here so i've just copied i'm going to paste them as values not as formula so values here and i click ok so you can see there is no formula here no formula here but if you click here there is formula so that's portfolio return over here i'll put date so i have the dates from 29th october 2015 all the way to 2020 so i have also copied these dates for the respective portfolio return so i've got the date and portfolio return what i will do next is i will now highlight all these and then i will short it filter it based on portfolio return so that's what i'm going to do next and in order to short i can just click here in microsoft excel and then i can click custom short and short by portfolio return that's what I need to click. Smallest to largest means the highest negative value will appear on the top. And that's what I have just achieved. You will see the maximum daily return is here, which is just over, just very close to 6%. If you convert into percent, you can see this. But just leave it as it is. And now, what we can do is compute the historical simulation given VAR. So over here, what I will do is I will have a table and in that table, I will have 90% and I will have 95%. I'll also have 97.5%. Now we'll have 99% confidence intervals. These are different confidence intervals. And next I will have the uncertainty or probability uh, that uh, there is a risk, which here is one minus 90% is 10% and so on. And now I can compute historical simulation uh, generated VAR and that's very simple I simply need to apply equal percentile function and I can take the dot exc one and where it says array I can go back here and in the portfolio return I can highlight all of these and then I can mention the the kth which is probability that's 10 percent in the first case so i have it historical simulation give it we are in percentage and i also want to find this in terms of uh, 
currency or amount so i will just paste it here and i will say give me 18 dollar uh, or hong kong dollar uh, or any currency uh, so the amount that was invested is 1 million pound or hong kong dollar so that's what i have defined and i will lock it and times it with the this amount and what i will also say is this is uh, abs when 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 you put abs this basically means any negative value will be uh, eliminated which means the negative sign will be eliminated so that's what you obtain now in order to copy and paste it for other confidence intervals i simply need to lock this that's what i have done now i have achieved everything so here i have reported the historical simulation given var so let's focus on five percent it's nineteen thousand nine hundred and eighteen dollar forty cent so that's what we can achieve at 95 percent confidence interval these in percentage terms we can mention are these values so what i will do which is the last thing is we will try and see where exactly this lies in the graph so basically we want to create the histogram so what i will do here is i will create a column in which i will say it's the bin and i'll call the second column the frequency and where it is been i need the the lowest return which is this amount here and then i need to go all the way to highest which i know is not 0.0599 or six percent so what i will do in order to create that uh, classification i will add some number here such as 0.002 one five trust me this is just the trial and error uh, you can have other numbers instead of 0 0.0015 but what you need to do is go all the way to this value here which is 0 0.0599 so that's what i'm doing as i go down you see 0 0.0510 is here i still need to go a little bit more down 585 is here as soon as i reach six percent i will stop so that's six percent i can stop there so this has captured all the values the lowest which is this and the highest which is 0 0.0599 and this is all here now i'm going to ask the computer to tell me how many of the returns do i have uh, which falls in these range of returns so for which what you need to do is highlight all this area type in equal frequency and then open bracket go to your main portfolio return which is this and then find out the bin that you have defined which is this close bracket control shift enter do not just hit enter control shift and enter and you get the frequency after this you just draw the histogram or you may like to make the line chart in that case the line chart is here and that's what you can do um, so you see this is showing you something very very important this is in fact showing you the the characteristics of a financial market which is most of the returns are centered here but there were times in which the returns were too far away to negative side and also far away toward the positive side let us change the value here as well so i just need to go and select it uh, add it and over here i just need to assign these so i have now in the diagram uh, the values for my x axis they have too many decimal places so i will change them in fact i'll put them in percentage 
and increase them to two decimals um, so I can now see where is negative 1.992 so negative 1.992 is between these two so what I will do I will just put some symbol there to suggest where the the 95 percent confidence interval given VAR lies it's here so we have seen where it lies uh, that's here okay so that's basically historical simulation given value at risk at 95 percent confidence interval which is negative 1.992 and that's something we have been able to see now when you go and see uh, something uh, like value at risk um, and, and open um, a diagram such as here then you can quickly see that the value at risk is talking about this point here that's what we have simply identified with the help of this real world stock return that we computed based on which we also formed the portfolio return now here the last thing you can do is relate this to the number of days so basically these in this computation we have a total number of 1234 days so what we've got is 1234 days um, of return so that would basically means at 95 percent confidence interval the worst days the worst uh, quantile at 5th percentage uh, you are looking at let's say 62 uh, worst outcome so therefore over here what you can do is you can basically uh, check and find out where is 62 so you will see that 62 would lie somewhere here uh, yeah so we will be able to see that um, 62 is here um, and that's 4th of September and this is the number uh, 0 0.0199 so that's again you will see is similar to what you have identified for the uh, using the the method 1.992 and here again 1.9 so if you change this into percentage you get something closely similar minus 1.9 of course you remember it was 62 so we sorry we're looking here not there so here it is 1.99 percent negative here we've got 1.99 as well so what we have been able to see is that's the the worst at 60 second outcome which is here so what you can do now is you can see what was the news on the 4th of September because this is the day that relates to 95 percent confidence interval given VAR and uh, therefore you can see if there was anything that impacted the stock returns for your portfolio so that was a quick illustration and explanation to the use of historical simulation given VR. I hope you find this useful. Thank you very much for listening and thank you for your time.